All right. So um, first of all, do I have everybody's permission to record this? Because I am in America and I think um, I have a lot of people that I would like to see a black animator talking to a bunch of black animation students. So are you guys okay with me recording this? Because I think there's a lot that can be learned from this. Is everybody okay with that? Yes? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Made history, man. Yes. All right. So um, my name is Rich Graham. I'm from America, obviously. Um, I'm originally from New Jersey, and I moved to Atlanta in 2000 and no, actually in 1999. And I've always been an artist. I am an animator by trade. Um, I will say professionally, because I do get paid to make cartoons at this point in my life, which took a very long time to very do. Nice. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna come and tell my story. And um, I hope during my story, you learn some things, um, I know that my story is very unique compared to any other animator. Everybody has their own path and their own story to what you would label success. So I just want to tell my story and I, I, I hope that you learn different things and you can learn um, just from, not even from mistakes I made, but maybe I can teach you things from my story so you can take some shortcuts so you don't have to bump your head on the wall. I hit a lot of walls on my road. so. I always promised myself when I got to a certain level that if I could mentor someone or teach someone through my experiences to help them get to where they need to get faster, that I would do that. And um, I'm so glad that Nemo reached out to me because I think it's even cooler that I'm doing it for a bunch of black students in Africa. Yes. Black animators in Africa. I think that is amazing. So, you know, I, I really appreciate y'all for having me, man. I, I'm excited about this. I think this is special. <clears throat> so, um, once again, my name is Rich. I am the owner of an animation, independent animation studio called Manchild Media. That is mine. Um, I never wanted to work for another studio. I had an entrepreneurial spirit. So, ever since I was a child, when I was drawing and making cartoons, my vision was never to work for someone. My vision was always to just be able to be able to create my way and control my content. And it's a long, hard road. It's been a long, hard road to do that. And I'm still actively trying to do that. But it's, it's the road that I chose. So I'm just going to tell you my story and tell you how I got to where I am. Um, I've been drawing since I was five years old. Since I can remember, I've always been drawing. I used to draw on paper, paper plates, walls. I would draw on a crayon, you know what I mean? Like, I think all of us, you know, if you, if you love art, you love to draw. So um, I used to always doodle. I used to make my own comic books when I was 12 years old with my best friend. Uh, I was always big on storytelling. So we would make our own stories and make our own comic books and we would draw them and color them and I would do a lot of the writing. So just creating, actively creating is something I'm, I've always been into. You know, I think as artists, if you have something, if you're inspired by something, you should just do it. I think you should just do it. I don't, I don't feel like you should care how anybody feels about it. If you want to make a cartoon about a cell phone, you should just do it. Make your cell phone cartoon because it's just an expression. And, <laughs> yeah, and if you're actively working, you get better no matter what it is, no matter what you're doing. So um, as far as education goes, I went to the Art Institute of Philadelphia for two years. I majored in animation and graphic design because originally I wanted to make video games. So after I got into the program, I learned that I really liked traditional animation instead of 3D animation. Um, so I started focusing more on 2D animation and I ended up moving to Atlanta because I felt there was more opportunity because I still was always mindful of when I graduated, I kind of wanted to do my own thing and not just get a job. So Atlanta is the land of opportunity in America for black people. So that's why I moved there because I know that, and this is why I like this, right? In my, in my generation coming up in America, there were not a lot of animators that looked like me. So yep. again, I'm just smiling 
I'm gonna, this is gonna be my theme, black animators, because you don't see this. I think this is beautiful. When I was coming up in school, there was not really anybody that looked like me that was doing this. You know, there were maybe like four of us in my class. And I mean the whole class, the whole wow. class out of the whole school, you know, that looked like me. So I think this is very cool. Um, what, what I want to focus on is preparation. And there's a phrase that I live by and it is success is when preparation meets opportunity. One thing about me is I always make sure that I'm prepared. I always mm -hmm. practice. I always focus on my craft because I never know what's going to happen and what position I'm going to get thrown in. And when I'm thrown in that position, I want to make sure that I'm prepared because you don't get a second chance sometimes. So, you know, I want you guys to always make sure that you're always creating. So if you do get an opportunity, even if it is a job, if your goal is to work for a studio, let's say you, you're out to lunch one day and you run into someone who's the head of a studio and you just start talking to them and they realize what you do and they offer you a job. If you're not prepared, you may never get that opportunity again. So, you know, I want you to always focus on your craft, practice, 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 create, 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 because opportunity doesn't come all the time. So I want you to be prepared because again, preparation needs opportunity create success. So um, I'm always creating. So I always, um, I also want to focus on networking. Uh, this is not going to be like a regular lecture. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm more about, I'm a hustler. I'm a hustler. I feel like it's cool to be an artist. I know a lot of poor artists. I know a lot of animators who are amazing, way better than me, way better than me, but they don't know how to network. They don't know how to work a room. They don't know how to, grab a contact, hold on to a contact, and make that into something that can help their career. So that's something that I want you guys to, if you don't leave with anything, I want you to leave with, you have to learn how to network. You know, being an artist is one thing, but you have to know how to sell yourself because you just don't know when you're gonna get these chances and they're not gonna come to you. I want you to go out there into the world and get it. Don't just go out there when you graduate with all these skills and just wait for a job or just look for a job. <clears throat> I want you to create your own opportunities. Um, even- I'd love for you to talk more about that later on because I don't think we've really talked and the big uh, reason why I, would lo I love having people who are in the industry like you is that you give that realistic point of view. So maybe later on you can expand more on that prepar preparation and networking and what that means. Absolutely. And I want you guys to take notes. When I'm done talking, I'm, I want to answer every single question that you have before I get out of here. Um, I just wanted to make sure I hit on certain topics first, and it might steer you in the direction of what questions to ask me. Um, let's see. So I talked about entrepreneurship. Again, I'm really big on that. Like, I, as I said, I've, I've, I've worked for other people because that's the only way to be a boss. You have to be a worker. You have to learn how to be a good worker before you become a boss. So I've done graphic design, I've done flyers, I've done, I've done logos, I've done grunt animation work, I've been hired to do animation work for projects that I didn't believe in, didn't care about, but I did it for the experience. And I always make sure I work the room. So for example, I worked for a, I did a free, some freelance work for a company and didn't like the work, didn't believe in the project, but it didn't matter to me. They were paying, the pay was terrible, but it was an opportunity for me to prove that I could do the work. It was op an opportunity for me to learn, even teach myself that I can work with a team because it was my first time working with a team. But within that, I ended up making friends on that animation team that I still use in my network today. So if I have a project that I'm working on now, I have a whole Rolodex of people that I've accumulated over the years because I've kept in contact with colleagues and other people that I knew were talented and that I wanted to work with. So that's very important too. Like everybody in this Zoom call, some of you guys, I'm sure you've seen each other's work. If you haven't, you need to look at each other's work. And when you do that, 
you need to make a conscious effort to focus on who you feel like in the future you could create with. Because I have friends in college, again, kids in the animation program in my school didn't look like me. So the teachers didn't, they, they weren't helpful. You know, racism is real. Stereotyping is real. And I went through that my whole career. So when I was in school, I believed in myself and I knew I was talented, but I remember a lot of times I really wanted to learn things and the teachers didn't want to answer my questions and didn't want to give me the information because of how I looked. And mm. one of my best friends to this day is be I got because he was a white classmate who looked at my work, loved my work, saw that I was talented, saw that I was serious, and we became best friends because he was able to teach me the things that I didn't know, and I was able to teach him the things that he didn't know. So we were able to learn from each other. And I've honestly learned in my career more from my peers than I've ever learned from any teacher. There's only one teacher who, you know, cared to show me things. And even her, I met through him. So I want you guys, you know, networking is key. You have to network, especially with your classmates. You guys are a team. You're not against each other. It's not like if he gets an A and you get an A, you fail. You're not competing with each other. So guess what? Everybody that's getting an A, that means you're doing a damn good job. So y'all need to link up and stay in contact when you leave school because you need a network. And what I've also learned is it's very, very hard to make an animation by yourself. Extremely mm -hmm. hard. Every movie that I've ever seen has had hundreds of names on it. Hundreds of names. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I see a nine person animation team right here. I love that. Just looking at it as classmates. No, that is a nine person animation team. That's a small studio. If you think that way. I love it. Rich, I have a couple of students who are trying to log in. Okay. Um, if you don't mind to just Admit. let them in. Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. I love that. I love that image. That's excellent. I love that. Yes. Okay, I got them in. Welcome, welcome, new students. So um, where I am now in my career is, I guess I still want to talk about my path. Um, so after college, after college, I pitched a show to MTV. Are you guys familiar with a rapper named Little John? Little John and Eastside Boys? Okay, so I had a cartoon that I pitched for him. And again, this is me believing in myself. He was never even thinking about doing a cartoon. Because I'm a networker, I was able to meet his manager, pitched him the idea. I didn't really ask for much money. I just did it just to show him that I could do it. And I've done that a lot. A lot of times you have to have faith in yourself and don't do things for the money. You have to do it for the bigger picture. So that's why I say always just create and always just do things. So I did it and they loved it. And my uh, friend at the time, we drove from Atlanta to New York and met with MTV and MTV loved it. And this was my first meeting with any type of executive of any kind. So this was my first time pitching a show in my whole life and they wanted to pick it up. So that right there taught me everything I needed to know. It taught me to, again, if I have an idea, just make it. Don't worry about the money, just do it. Use my networking skills to get it in front of the person that I needed to get it into. And then don't wait for them to make the move because no one's going to be hungrier than you for your own thing. I was more hungry than them. I cared more about it. They were rich. I wasn't rich. But I wanted to make a cartoon. So I drove to New York on my own money, stayed in a hotel for my own money, did the pitch meeting. You know, we did it on our own and we got it. So ever since then, I've been using that formula to succeed in life with everything. And I haven't succeeded all the time. I've taken lots of losses, but that's the game. But the, the key is to always believe in yourself and keep trying because sometimes you do win. You might lose a thousand times, but that one win, that one win could change your life. So I live by that. 
I live by that. And that's where I am now. So you see this background right here. This is my cartoon. This is my cartoon called The Roach Motel. It was created and written by me. Um, it stars DC Young Fly, Carlos Miller, and Chico Bean from the, sh the show Wild and Out. They're also from the 85 South show. They're very popular comedians. They are an amazing cast. And the way that came about was the same thing. I had this idea. I've been working on this for over a decade. Everybody thought I was crazy. They were like, okay, nobody wants to see a bunch of roaches. What is this? Are you calling black people roaches? They didn't get it. But I know my target audience. I know what we want to see. I know what's funny to us. So I wrote something for us, by us. And because at the time I didn't have money to hire a team to animate it, I found a program that was not easy, but made it more efficient for me to animate it by myself. And I started animating it myself. I did the voiceovers with my best friend before those guys even came in. I started putting it out every week like a psycho. I created an episode every week by myself, writing and animating it. And after maybe 90 days, I was burnt out, but I didn't stop. I ended up meeting these famous comedians who didn't know me from a can of paint, but saw it, loved it, believed in it. They came on board as the cast. That opened up my audience to a million people. Um, we're, our fan base is crazy. We have a loyal fan base now. Now we're talking about pitching to networks, but because we're so self-sufficient, we may not even go to networks. We might stay independent and just keep building in-house because um, we're all about ownership and black independence and black excellence. So, you know, wow. that's enough. we don't want anyone to take the intellectual property. I don't think I want it to be on TV. I think I'd rather create our own network and keep all the money and keep our creativity because I also know that if you sell your show, you don't own it anymore yep. to a network. If I've, I've been to Adult Swim, they liked it. Maybe I could have got it with them, maybe I couldn't have, but I pulled back because they could take it, they could put it on for a year and cancel it and I could never do anything with it again. There's options, there's levels. So I'm still weighing my options because I'm a businessman and I'm an entrepreneur, you know? Mm. Maybe I do take the deal so I get more exposure and have a whole nother show ready behind that that I can negotiate another deal with. You know, you have to, you have to be creative with your art, but you also have to be smart because you don't, you don't want people to steal your things. And I'm not saying I have all the answers. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, as of right now though, I'm a black owned business, I own, my show 100% and if I want to do a deal with someone with a bag, that bag is going to come to me first before it's divided and someone gives me 20% of my own bag. Amen to that. Yeah. Whoa, love it. Yeah, so Sorry. that's where we are so far. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like I'm rambling. I, I, there's, uh, there's just so much I want to touch on. No, um, this is good. This is really good. Okay. What do you think guys? It's good, right? I know I'm forcing them like, yeah, because I'm really right. feeling this. Conversation. You guys following so far? Everybody cool? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, also, I want to talk about, about mentorship. Again, growing up, I never had anybody who I knew who was an animator, white or black. I just didn't know any animators. Everybody that I grew up with was, you know, doing regular things, doing regular nine to fives or wanting to do sports or going to law or, you know, whatever. Anything that you could think of as a regular job is what everyone around me was doing. I'm the only guy who was drawing and kept saying, I'm going to make cartoons, I'm going to make cartoons. And people were just like, okay, Rich is the guy who draws. But no one could see the vision. And there was no one that I could go to for advice ever, ever. So that's why I'm taking this time with you guys very seriously because Again, I want to give you all the information that I can because no one ever gave it to me. No one. Everything that I learned, I learned on my own. I bumped my head a million times. I've had a million doors slammed in my face. I've had a million people tell me that they didn't understand. They just don't get it. And I didn't expect them to get it, but I always wish I had someone that I could call or email or text and just ask for advice, um, white or black, just any animator that was 
older than me that would talk to me and tell me what to do. So I was blessed to find two mentors that became colleagues kind of, and I think that's very cool and, and I'm grateful for that. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with a show, Archer, are you, you, have you guys ever seen Archer or heard of Archer? Okay, well, Archer is a famous show on FX, Emmy Award winning animated show. It's hilarious, I love that show. If you've never seen Archer, look it up. You guys probably have seen it. So I study what I like. And I noticed that what I liked the most about Archer were the environments. I don't do environments. I'm a character animator. I'm a storyteller and a character animator. I know my strengths, I know my weaknesses. So the way my brain works is, okay, if I can animate the characters, I want someone cool who can make the environments. And I always love the environments from Archer. So because I've always worked and put my work out and always networked, I am known as the black animator in Atlanta. That's what I'm known as. Like anybody who thinks of anything cartoon related, they think I'm rich. That's what I'm known for because I don't keep my mouth shut. Anybody that I go around, hey, I have this cartoon, The Roach Motel. If you ever need some animation, let me know. I do that. I have my own company. I have my own team. I built my network, blah, blah, blah. So one day, a girl that I know, I go to a, a kid's birthday party. I take my son to a kid's birthday party, and a girl pulls me to the side. She says, Rich, I know a guy. He works for Archer. I should introduce you to him. I think he would like your show. So I say, oh, man, that's cool. That's very cool. She gives me the phone number. I reach out. The guy that she introduces me to is the lead environment artist for Archer. He lives in Atlanta, super cool guy. We go out to lunch, we meet, we hit it off, and he agreed to do all the environments for the Roach Motel. So when you see the Roach Motel, the environments are amazing because they're done by the guy who does the environments for Archer. I watched it, they are, oh wow, okay. Yeah. I can't take credit for that. He did that. I had the vision, but my networking skills led me to the right person. Now. Again, when we talk about mentorship, I've learned from him. But what's so cool is he's learned from me because he came up in the studio, working for a studio game. I came from the, I want my own studio game. So again, we're teaching each other and meeting in the middle. And it's just amazing to have different sides. I'm looking at him like, oh my God, you're amazing. And he's looking at me like, Oh my God, you're amazing. So he actually ended up hiring me to do a project with him about defunding the police last month, which I thought was amazing, amazing. Um, and then the ups, there's another person that I really wanted to meet. I'm sure everybody here is familiar with the Boondocks and Black Dynamite. Carl Jones is someone, to me, he was the, cre he's the cream of the crop. Like, you know, he's the Jay-Z, of black animation to me. So I've always wanted to meet him. I studied him, I watch all his interviews. He's, he doesn't talk much, so he doesn't have many. But, you know, I always put it in the air. One day I'm gonna meet Carl Jones. One day I'm gonna meet Carl Jones. He's gonna be my mentor. The 85 South guys, my cast, they're famous. They're on MTV, they do movies, they know everyone. So they had a big comedy show in LA two years ago. I go to LA with them on my own dime. I pay for my own plane ticket. I pay for my own hotel. I don't ask for anything ever, ever. I do it on my own. I self, I'm self-sufficient. I find a way. Even if I don't have a way, I find a way. And I think that's a big reason they respect me. They, my, my, my boy Carlos Miller, he, in, he invited Carl Jones to their comedy show. And I'm backstage and Carlos comes up to me and he says, Rich, I got a surprise for you, but don't cry. I'm like, what are you talking about, don't cry? He's like, I want you to meet somebody. I'm like, okay. I walk down the stairs, it's Carl Jones. The Carl Jones from the Boondocks and Black Dynamite. Uh, and I'm like, oh shit. That's exactly what I said, oh shit. Right in front of him, this is how he met me saying, oh shit. So he starts laughing and it blew my mind because he was fully aware of the show. He watched it and he told me I was one of the best animators he's ever seen. Wow. Highlight of my career. Wow. So when I contact him, 
he responds. He's a very busy person. He doesn't respond right away. But the fact that I can contact him and ask him for advice and he gives it is a blessing that I always prayed for and I, I don't take lightly. And what that what ended up happening with that is I didn't I didn't want to keep asking him like, hey man, can you do this for me? Do this. It was just information. Hey Carl, what do you think about this? Just advice. Can you look at this? What do you think about this? If I do go to the networks, do you think I can own, keep some ownership or do I need to stay by myself? You know, how can I keep leverage? You know, asking him business questions that no one would know but him, especially, you know, maybe someone who, who's white might have, have had different experiences, but I know he's had experience that I'm going to have because he's black. You know, I'm, it, it never falls short on my brain that I'm black. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm, I'm always conscious and aware of that. So when I step into a room, I know I have to keep that in mind because I'm, again, I'm not just an animator, I'm a black animator. So I may, I may be treated different sometimes. I may not be, you know? So I ask him these questions and, you know, I consider him a mentor. And with that relationship, he actually called me one day and got me a job a project. There's a show called Insecure on HBO. Yeah. Um, there's an actress named Yvonne Orji. She plays the best friend of Molly on Insecure. She had a, a comedy special on HBO, a stand-up comedy special, an hour special, and she wanted to do an animated music video as a trailer for the show, for promotion. Carl threw me the job. Carl called her. Um, you know, he recommended me. He had full faith in me to do the job. I met her, she was amazing. And I gave her the budget. She paid me what I asked her to pay me. I busted my ass under a ridiculous deadline. I put my team together the way I was supposed to. I knew who to pick. I knew what character designer I wanted. Actually, it was just two of us. I know a, I know a character designer that was amazing. I called him, he was in budget, paid him. We sat down, we put it together. I did all the animation and we got it done in time and we put it out and she loved it. And I'm grateful to Carl because he trusted me, but I also made sure that I, I didn't let him down. You know what I mean? So when people put you in position, you don't want to let yourself down first of all, but if somebody plugs you with a job, you know, you make sure you do right by, right by them because I know for a fact, if, I, if anything ever comes across their desk animation wise, I know they're going to call the kid because I did right. my job, you know? Love so, it. Again, success is when preparation meets opportunity. I keep getting these opportunities, but when I get them, I'm prepared. I never have to go, okay, wait, let me, let me, no, I'm ready. And if I'm not ready, I get ready immediately. Immediately. If there's something, animation, every project is different. I don't always know how I'm going to do something because everything's different. So I don't, you know, sometimes there might, I might have to make an explosion and I've never made an explosion in my life. So you know what I do? First thing I do, teach myself how to make an explosion. Now, so when it comes, so, so when I'm reading the script and I see explosion, first thing I do, I stop reading the script, go learn how to make an explosion. Practice, practice, get the explosion ready. Okay, then I go back to the script. So when it's time for production, we're working. Never stop learning, never stop learning. Right. Love it. I guess I'm done. Love <laughs> it. <laughs> So many questions, guys. Who wants to go first? A GK joined us. We have a few people who just joined us, like a GK, and um, I think Humphrey was already there. Who wants to go first with questions? Because I know you all have questions. Don't be shy, guys. I'm here to answer questions. Nobody was able to answer my questions, yeah. so please let me answer your questions. Um, so I'm glad hey. that uh. Without you got to talk about uh, the the Roach Motel, yes. and who did the environment? Because when I was watching it, and I you know I was also watching like the other animations on your website, um, I was like, damn, this this thing, is, the environments are giving me an Archer vibe. And then you, you go on to talk, I was like, oh yeah, the guy who did the was from Archer. I was like, damn, <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. It is. And then, like also like and then like also when you were like, oh yeah, even like I went to Adult Swim and I was pitching my idea. Like there's this other animation, uh, what is it called? Uh, Savage News. Yes. But like the, the two guys, the two, I'm like, I was like getting the, the kings of Chamberlain high vibes. And, and then you go on to say, like, yeah, bro, I don't see. I was like, damn. 
Yeah, actually, um, well, like, yeah. The, Savage News, the Savage News was on Kevin Hart's LOL Network. And that was brought to me, again, from networking, PK. Uh, me being with the comedians that are on my show, me just hanging around, there was another comedian named Billy Sorrells, who's a genius. And he saw the Roach Motel and said, hey, man, I have an idea for a cartoon. Kevin Hart's network is going to pick it up. And he hired me to animate that, and it was on there. I actually forgot about that. That's cool, man. I'm glad you saw that. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I speak to my audience. Like, I keep picking things. Cool projects, you know, too. I want to work on stuff that's cool, you know? Yeah. And, like, you know, I, I actually liked it because it, like, it reminded me of an argument I had in high school with someone. And like there was there was the dude in the red shirt, and I was a dude in the blue shirt, and that's and then someone else came in, and I was like, "Yo, what's going on?" And then we, we I made my points, and then he was, and then the guy was still like, "Nah, you guys are wrong, man." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Damn, <laughs> I guess you know it also happens elsewhere." I'm glad I'm glad you like it. As long as you're laughing, I'm good because that's the whole point. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna put my um my email address and my website in the chat too. So any questions that you have later, you guys have a way to reach me. Awesome. I think we have one person hanging out. If you, when you get a chance, please let them in. Oh, okay. Um, I have a question because we keep going along. I really want you to talk about why you're really emphasizing um, on being a black animator. I lived in the U.S. for 21 years, so I, I definitely my career started in in the U.S. and that's where I grew. Um, but a lot of the the privilege of being in Africa is that you don't have to be reminded that you're black. It, it's not a disease. <laughs> Sorry to say it that way, but when you're in America, it it's feels like you have a disease for being black. Um, I really want you to talk a little bit more about that because I think a lot of our students will get those opportunities to leave, leave Africa, work with other people, and especially you emphasizing on intellectual property was so important and black owned businesses. I'm such a big proponent of that. And I've been telling them we need to tell more about African stories. Um, I see somebody here has, I don't know if you've noticed that Lewis has, um, uh, a Maasai guy. I mean, we really need to tell our stories as Black people, and which is something that we haven't been able to do. I want you to talk more about that. And we know the temperature, and we felt the, we have felt the temperature now, um, especially after George Floyd's death. Talk more about that and what that looks like, and why it's important as Black people for us to own our businesses, to tell our stories, um, especially in this day and age, and especially for this generation. Um, that we're rising up, what we, what's important? What should we need to, what do we need to know? Well, you know, America, America is different. America was built on the backs of black people. So, you know, inherently we have an underdog attitude. You know, everyone's not racist. All white people are not bad, but a lot of people who are in control look at us and treat us differently either that or they just have had a head start. They have been, you know, teaching their kids about ownership and building credit and um, owning things and passing it down and keeping it in the family and giving their children a head start. We're not raised that way, not in America. Like the average black family is if they're not struggling, you know, they're still trying to keep up with the status quo because we're already 10 steps behind. We're born 10 steps behind because slavery, we're hundreds of years behind automatically, you know? But the beauty of us is we caught up. We catch up fast. And I think right. we could learn from other communities. That's why I admire the Asians who come to America. When they come over here, they stick together. They put their money together. They buy businesses. They take those, that money from those businesses, give it to another family member, start their business, take that money, give it to another family member, start their business. We don't do that. The Jewish community does it. We don't do that. So I've always paid attention to that. I'm very Cognitive, but I, I get that. I get that. I see that. And that's what I want to do for my, my family, my friends, my network, students, guys like you, 
You know, no one was even telling me this. I don't even know how I know this, how I learned this. No one taught me this. So these are things that I just learned inherently and I, and I just grabbed just from living in just the way I think. But if someone were to tell me this in my second year of college, oh my yeah. God, I'd be a millionaire. Yeah. I'd be a millionaire and all my friends would be millionaires right now, right now. So, you know, ownership is everything. And especially in America, because in America, if you don't own it, they can take it from you at any time. You know what I mean? So it's one thing to be creative, but I want you guys to be black businessmen and business women. Have ownership, own something, own right. something because they can't take it away from you. And the bag is bigger. We want the bag. Get the bag. Get the bag. It's your bag. It's your bag. Thank you. Other questions? Um, yeah, I got one or two or three. Um, I wanted to know, uh, like when you started out with the, you, you talked about how you uh, used to animate uh, like the, the episodes when you started out. How yeah. long were each episode and like how did you maintain like a consistent schedule to make sure like you release an episode each week? Because I want to get into that and I, I don't know how you do it, man, because it's like it's really hard to finish animation by yourself, you know, and to do it weekly, something else. So I just wanted to know how you manage that. That's a great question. I'm a crazy person, Humphrey. I believe in myself and, <laughs> you know, seriously, no, I, it, what, it, what it is is I just know that, I just knew nobody, nobody was gonna do it for me. And I wanted to get it done, I just really, really wanted people to see my vision man and and i know that is a simple answer but that's really what it was like i believed in myself so what i would do is i would i would have my release date every wednesday and actually i don't i don't want to skip this i'm glad you asked that because i skipped this so i've always had the stories i know these characters like the back of my hand because they're based on me and my friends in my crazy life they just happen to be roaches, but that's why they're relatable because they're all based on real people that I know or combinations of people that I know. So the storytelling is the easiest part, but getting it done was a problem. So they, are you, have you guys ever seen a cartoon on YouTube called Barry Tales? Are you, have you, are you familiar with that? No, right? Neither was I. I'm a DJ, I left that part out. So I'm a big DJ in Atlanta. And that's another way I built my network in the music industry because a lot of people know me from music, but everybody who knows I'm a DJ knows I'm an animator because what do I say? As soon as I get in the room, hey, that's DJ Filthy Rich. Yeah, I'm DJ Filthy Rich, the guy who does the cartoons. Have you seen the Rope Motel, blah, blah, blah? That's how I talk to people. So um, there was a, a guy named Blue who, at one of the DJ meetings I was at, cool guy. And when I said what I did, he said, hey, man, you ever see this show called Barry Tales? And I was like, no. He said, you need to watch that, man. I think you'll love it. So I looked it up. I'm big on reading credits. So I'm watching this show, and it was about, uh, every episode on YouTube was about 11 minutes. I loved it. I thought it was funny. Simple animation, but it, was, it looked great. Great. And, I, and every time I looked at the credits, it had one guy's name on there under animation. And I'm like, well, where's the rest? Is, is everybody not getting the credits? You know, what's going on? So I started... I Googled his name and I started looking and he was doing it by himself. To me, that was unheard of. Who, wow. who does a cartoon by themselves, right? Same way you're asking me. I was asking myself, like, how is this possible? So I did research on him and found out that there's a program. Uh, have you ever guys, you guys ever heard of a program called Moho Studio? Moho, yeah. Moho. Look that up. M-O-H-O -O Studio. This is the software that he was using. I bought the software and when I taught myself that software, I realized that it does make it possible to do it by yourself. If you bust your ass, you still have to work extremely hard, but it's a lot easier than any other software I've used. Not easier, but 
faster. You can get things done faster. And it, there's a lot of things you can do in that one program. You can draw in it. You can storyboard in it. You can do effects in it. You can move cameras in it. It's amazing. And that me learning that program changed my life. So once I learned that program, I did an episode and I timed myself and it took me, I worked on it eight hours a day for five days and I ended up being able, at first I was terrible. Like if you watch my very first episode, the, the movement is trash, you know what I mean? But I didn't care. It was still funny to people and I was learning as I went along. So, you know, I, I just learned from experience. I would time myself. I would see how many hours a day I put in on it, see how much I got done. And then that's how my schedule worked. But I made sure that because I already told everyone I was going to put it out every Wednesday, no matter what, for months, man, months, I did it every Wednesday. Sometimes it took me five days. Sometimes it took me up until... I dropped at noon every Wednesday. I would be rendering at 11.30 a.m., scrambling to get it done. Wow. So once that kept happening and I was losing all kinds of sleep, now mind you, I wasn't making any money off of this. I'm a DJ by trade, so I DJ at night. I have a wife and two kids. I have had family time, but I had tunnel vision, laser focus, so I didn't sleep for real. And after a while, I was like, you know what? All right, Rich. Okay, they get it. You can do it every Wednesday. Let's dial it back. Let's dial it back. And I stopped doing that because that was psychotic. So what I ended up doing was just saying, you know what? I'm going to work hard on it, make it as beautiful as I can, take as much time as I want to take on it, and put it out when I want to put it out. And, you know... Having a schedule did help me because when I was doing it every week, my followers were going up fast because it's what people are accustomed to when they're watching program. It's programming, right? It's like, okay, every, every Sunday night I watch Power at 10 o'clock. I know Power comes on. Every Sunday, 10 o'clock, I'm going to watch it. But when I changed my schedule, people didn't know when it was going to come out. But when it did come out, it was more anticipated. And when it did come out, it looked way better. It was way more funny because I had more time to work on the story and I wasn't exhausted. So I had time to market it. It's another thing we didn't even go into, marketing and promotion. Please do not bust your ass on all this beautiful work and don't market and promote it. If nobody knows about it, nobody's gonna see it. That's right. I tell everybody about my work. I could be in Walmart, I promise. The, the grocery store, the supermarket, anywhere. If someone starts talking to me, I'm going to tell them to go on YouTube and watch The Roach Motel. Go on Manchild Media, my website. I'm an animator. If you know anybody who needs cartoons, go check out my work. You have, oh, to, yeah. you have to promote yourself. So, you know, to answer your question, I found my schedule and my rhythm for a long time to do it every week. But I would never do that again. Never. I'm tired. I'm still tired from that. And that was years ago, four or five years ago. <laughs> how long how long were each episode the episodes were between three and five minutes okay now but now my episodes are like 11 to 20 minutes because i take my time on them you know they come out when they come out but now i'm more focused on um i made my pilot so it took what i did last year was i took six months and I made a 30-minute pilot episode. So when I if, I, if I do decide to go to the networks when we have the leverage, I have a 30-minute pilot already produced. So, that, you know, they don't have to, there's no guesswork in it. You know, for people who don't get it, here, man, just watch it. If, I, if you don't get it from me explaining it, you can just watch it. Here, it's done already. Just give me the check. I know, and I can show that I can do it already. So I don't need your help. We're self-sufficient over here. Give me the bag. The bag. Gotta have that bag. Gotta have a bag. We yep. work too hard. We work too yep. hard. Animation is hard work. People do not understand. You guys understand. It is yep. so hard and time consuming. 
You know, my son will come in the room like, Daddy, you've been in the office for nine hours, and that's all he's doing is moving his arm like this. I'm like, yeah, buddy. I got two more legs to go. Somebody's rope has got four arms. All right. They all got to move. Yeah, they all got to move. Yeah. They all have to move. Um, any other questions? I got, I got more, unless said someone else oh, wants to go. Oh, sure. Keep going. Up, bro. I'm here. I'm here. All right. Um, how do you uh, pitch yourself? Because I think a lot of us uh, have a problem with this. You know, like, when you meet people, like, how do you, how do you talk to them in such a way that, you know, you, like, you pitch yourself. You know, you can pitch a show, but then you also have, like, when you talk about, um, networking and all that so like how do you introduce yourself how do you talk about your work like how do you bring up that conversation like you know make that's it a great easy, question like, like make it so that they want to listen to you and like they're intrigued and all that yeah. so um again because of who i am and what i do it helps me talk to people a whole nother side of my life i, I i'm one of those people <laughs> It's gonna sound crazy, but I'm like a true Renaissance man. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm an artist. So any asset aspect of art, I've probably tried it. So I was a rapper in Atlanta for years, years. I'm comfortable in front of people. I'm comfortable on being on stage. To this day, I still host major concerts. I've hosted concerts for Future, Jeezy, Ti, The Migos, you name it. I've done it because again, I'm a big DJ and host in Atlanta. So. I'm used to you talking do, to people. You do realize telling us that we're going to put you on tour when you come to Africa, right? You do realize that. <laughs> I'm ready to do whatever, anything, you know, <laughs> I'm ready. But um, so, and, and I'm not saying that to Brad, you know, uh, that doesn't mean anything. What it means is I'm comfortable Brad. talking. Go ahead, to, Brad. You know what I mean? I'm comfortable talking to crowds of people. I'm, I'm a people person. But a lot of artists are not. A lot of artists, traditional animators are introverts. A lot of my artistic friends are quiet people. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're geniuses. Geniuses work and operate in different ways. So to answer your question, if you want to have somebody pay attention and buy into what you're trying to show them, what I want to tell you, Humphrey, and all you other guys, if you're shy, you have to be excited about it. People can sense that, right? So even if you're shy, just because you're shy doesn't mean you don't like your... I'm just gonna speak freely, guys. We're, we're all over 21 here. Hey, man, if you like your shit, act like you like your shit. Act like it's the best shit they never even saw. And even if it's not as good as they think it is, act like it is, because that's how it works. If you're confident, it's not about what you say, it's how you say it and how you present it to them. Like, yo, my name is Humphrey. I'm the best animator out here. Man, you got to see this. Watch this. Pull it up. Pull it up on your phone. Look at it. That's crazy, right? I did that. You know anybody who needs some animation? Yeah, here's my card, man. Or here's my YouTube page. Or here's my LinkedIn. Yeah, just let me know, man. I'm around. I can do that. You know, you have to do that. And if again, if you're an introvert, that's cool. You don't have to say much. You can let your work speak for itself. But you have to at least get them to look at it. And then you won't have to talk a lot if your work is good, right? Your work will speak for yourself. So you don't have to keep selling them, but I would practice that. You have to practice that. If you need to practice in the mirror, practice in the mirror. It's not corny, it's practice. Just like animation, you get better animating because you keep practicing. You need to practice how to network because you won't get a job or any opportunities if you don't talk. You have to talk. Now, the other thing is if you just don't have it, if it's just not in you to do that, then find somebody who does. Find somebody who's, you know, they could be your representative. That might even make you look cool. Like, hey, this is my manager. Find somebody who can talk, who's great at selling your work that you're friends with and have them do it for you if you can't do it. But I, I really want you guys to actively practice selling your own work because you're, you're buying into you. You're not even buying into the work to be honest. I've had people hire me who never saw my work a day in my life. They just know that I'm so confident. My work has to be good. It has to be. Because I'm telling them 
I'm so confident when I say it, I know I'm nice. And I'm not the best. I've seen animators way better than me. But they don't get shit done. I'm going to get it done. So I know when I'm talking to the person, I'm not lying when I say, yo, I can do it. If I don't know, because if I don't know how to do it, I'm going to find out how to do it anyway. So you have to be confident. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Let them feel that belief because it's real. If, if, you, and if you don't believe in yourself, then it's going to show too, you know? Take the shy part out. Right, do you think you're a, a good, do you think you make good work? I know I make good work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Say it again. I know I make good work. Yeah, you know it. That's it. That's it, man. And that's it. That's it. That's it. You won. You won. Don't be timid. I know I do good work. You got me. I'm sold. I've never seen your work, but I think you got some good shit. I do. I believe you. Because you believe it. Sold me. You just sold um, me. Isn't that? I got another one. Again, if someone wants to, you know, to ask a question, they can. I'll keep, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, so um, how do you how do you uh, how do you balance like like you talked about um sometimes you have to do certain things for free, not for the money but for the you know exposure and like growing your brand. So like how do you balance how much you do for for that and how much you do for for the money? Because I mean. You know, you have, of course, I understand that you have to build your brand and, you know, you can't always get paid. And I've done so much of that. So I just want to, I mean, I've gotten client work and I've also done some things for free as well. So I just want to know, like, how do you balance? Like, how do you know that you're doing enough of the building your brand part and how much of the, you know, getting paid? Like, how do you, how do you gauge that? How do you balance that? Like, how much do you do for, you know, for, Free for the sake of building your brand and, and what do you know like how do you know when to like put your foot down and be like okay I mean for this work I kind of feel like I should get paid this much or like so how do you go go about that um always get the bag always get the bag <laughs> no I'm playing so look it is it's like this oh, that bag. I'm not playing for real though right <laughs> Nemo we want the bag yes so, um, <laughs> so Value, right? The word value. Value is not always monetary. So I would say the way I gauge it is like I'm at a point in my career where I will never do anything for free ever again. Not in, ever in my life. I'm, you know, I work, I get money, I can get money. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it anymore. But I've done it. I've done it. And I don't regret doing it, but it's value, right? So I've done projects for free for the experience of it but nobody saw it. I didn't make any connections from it. So it was a waste of my time. So there was no value. Now, I've also done projects where I saw that, okay, if I do this, these people are really gonna use this and I have it in my contract, in my contract, in my agreement, that even if I'm not getting paid, I'm getting my credit. Your credit is, is your value. It may not be money, but the next time you have a conversation with someone, you could say, hey, I worked on this project. A lot of times the animators don't even get the credit. I see that all the time. It'll just say, made by such and such company, blah, 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 productions. And it doesn't have the names on there. No. So if you work for free, okay, I'll do this for free. But if I do this for free, put it in writing that my name is on this project as an animator or as a background artist or as a character designer or as a storyboarder or whatever your job is, that's the value. So you didn't leave with nothing. It adds to your resume and it's something you could prove, um, but don't do it a lot. Bag first, try to get that bag first because I still feel like there's not a lot of us running around. And I've learned that too. I've had somebody come up to me and say, how much would you charge to do this? And I'll give them my rate and they're like, damn, that's high. And I'm like, yeah, no. Animation is expensive. Well, damn, can't you just do it for this? No. When you go on Walmart and you go buy some cereal, when you go to the register, you'll be like, damn, this cereal costs $4. Can I get it for three? No. This is what it costs. If, if you can't fit my budget, I'm not going to tailor my budget to fit you 
if it's out of control. Now, of course, we can tell the budgets if it's within reason, right? You, you really have a bottom line, and you know you can come down a little bit. But never play yourself, because your time is the one thing in this world that you cannot get back. So you need to get paid for your time and your energy. Because you know what always happens to me, too? And I learned this the hard way, too, because I used to be like, damn, all right, let me just do it for these little pennies. I felt bad when I, I couldn't even look myself in the mirror when I was done. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, they played me, man. I should have got this. I took all that time, and this all I got out of that. I played myself. Don't, don't play yourself, you know? So keep your rate what your rate is within reason. Of course, we can always negotiate, right? But this is what happens. You give them your rate, and they be like, oh, man, that's too high. Okay. Because guess what happens? Next week, hey, Rich, man, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and rock with you, man. How, uh, you know, what's, what's your, uh, your business account number? How, can I get a deposit? Because they're going to shop around. Yo, it ain't a bunch of animators out here. And guess what? All the other animators out here are charging a standard rate. So you can shop around all you want. Ain't no, you, you get what you pay for. Now, if you find somebody cheap, they're probably a first year college student compared to where you guys are. So you get what you pay for. You want a $500 animation? Well, you're gonna get a $500 animation, but it's not gonna look like this $10,000 animation. I can please, please, right. please, I can guarantee you that. So let them shop around. Don't, don't, you know, don't, don't settle. Again, unless there's value there. Your name is important, right? The name Rich Graham means something in the animation world now, only because I made it mean, mean something. It's on everything that I ever worked on, everything. It is part of my deal, whether I'm a work for hire or not. My name goes on this. Humphrey, put your name on it. If they're not going to pay you, make sure your name is on it. But get paid and make them put your name on it. How about that? <laughs> for sure. For sure. Okay. Um, and uh, could you talk a little bit more on... Um, Marketing yourself, marketing your work, promoting yourself. Talk a bit more about that and how, like, how to get your work out there. I mean, I know there is social media and all that, but like, are there any other ways to make sure like your work is known? You know. Hey man, I really like your questions. I do. You you. I love your questions. So, yes, there is a way. Um, the market is flooded with information, especially social media, right? So there aren't many ways to stick out, to be honest. The, the first way, obviously, is to be unique, right? I think being unique is what helped me because I don't know another cartoon with roaches who are smoking weed and rapping and making music videos and going to the strip club and kicking it like people in Atlanta kick it. There's nothing like that. So it was easy for me to stick out. I carved a niche because I created something that was unique. But that wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Again, had me having a rapper background taught me guerrilla marketing. So again, social media is one thing, but you gotta get out in the streets. Again, that's what I'm saying. If you really want to do this and separate yourself from everyone else, the average animator is shy. The average artist is an introvert. The average artist is usually in the house creating. I'm not like that. Once I'm done creating, I want everybody to see it because I didn't do it for nothing. So I, I do guerrilla marketing and I learned this from being a rap artist. Man, you make stickers, you go in high traffic areas, you post that sh shit of your major character or your logo or whatever your company is. You post it on light poles, you put flyers on cars. It's old school, but it works because nobody else is doing it. Everybody else is doing social media. So you have to do things that are different. Merch, make your own merch, make t-shirts. Man, I, I rock Roach Motel stuff all the time. Like it's Gucci, I don't care. Because it is Gucci to me. Yeah. And now I have merch and people be like, oh, I like that shirt. Where you can get it? The RoachMotelTV.com, where the cartoon is at. You can watch the show, get a t-shirt, get an ashtray, get a sticker, get a lighter. So 
you, yeah. you just you have to change your tactics. Do what everyone else isn't doing. So guerrilla marketing, flyers, stickers, posters. I had pop up banners that I paid for, where it's big artwork with the Roche Motel. You pop it up. I've paid for billboard ads. Uh, any type of marketing that you could do, you do it. Um, I think the rule of thumb is, and I just learned this, you know, I, can't, I don't claim to know everything. I'm always learning as I go along because I'm still, no one, there's no one to teach me anything. It's just trial and error for real. I try everything. Uh, but when you're, when you're budgeting something for your own, let's say you're doing a $50,000 project, you need to tack on another 25,000, half the budget, just for marketing. Just for marketing. So whatever your project costs, Take 50% of that, add it on top. And that's just for marketing because no, no one's going to know about it. There's no point in doing it. And marketing costs. Marketing costs. So if, if you don't have the money to market, you be creative. Be creative. Do things to go viral. You know, you try everything. There's no real answer to that. My answer to that is just try everything, Doug. Try everything. All right. Got it. Got it. I have Lewis who asked a question. Lewis is having issues with his um, trouble with his uh, internet. He said, what's your opinion on how video on demand companies like Netflix, that's, that's actually a streaming. I don't think they're called video on demand anymore. They're called streaming services have changed the animation industry. How do you see it evolving in the future? Um, I, well, honestly, I think, uh, Regular TV is about to be extinct soon anyway. I feel like everyone is leaning towards streaming services anyway. Um, what I do like about it is though, the streaming services have the best cartoons. I think networks have a lot more restrictions from what I'm seeing than streaming services have. So I think it, it helps the creator be more creative. I see that they're taking more chances. Like there are shows on Netflix like I don't know if you guys have ever seen Big Mouth. Big Mouth is one of my favorite shows. It's hilarious, but there's no way mm. Big Mouth was going to come on TV. There's no way. There's no way, bro. No way. I love that show, but I don't even know how they pitched that show and got away with it. But I say that to say, you know, I like the streaming services. Um, the only thing I don't know yet, which I'm actively trying to learn, is I know they make their money off of, off of subscriptions. And I think... I make adult. I make adult animation. I don't make animation for kids. Which actually, animation for kids really is the bigger bag. I kind of probably went in the wrong lane. I might swerve back over there, you know, someday. But if you do adult animation, streaming services are better because they take more chances because they don't have to worry about advertisers. On TV, terrestrial TV, all they care about is the advertisers. So if Dove Soap is trying to buy ad or they're trying to sell ads to Dove Soap, and you have a cartoon where they're cursing and whatever, they're not gonna pick that up because it doesn't lend to their demographic and it doesn't sell ads and it doesn't make them money. This is all business, it's all business. So you have to be strategic when you're thinking about the content that you're making. I learned that the hard way too. You know, I thought it was gonna be real easy for me to do this. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Then I was like, oh man, I forgot. I only had Adult Swim that I could pitch to and Netflix at the time when I first made this, Fox couldn't do it. TBS couldn't pick it up. Nickelodeon can't pick it up. TBS can't pick it up because of the content. So I limited myself. But I still believe in it so much that I'm going to keep working it my way anyway. But, you know, if I knew then, I probably would have made a conscious effort to... I mean, I have other shows that I have tailor-made for that. But, you know, when you're creating your content, be conscious of that. Be conscious that networks need advertising dollars and it needs to fit that for them to even consider picking it up. Streaming services are different. They take more chances because they don't take advertising dollars. They make their money off of subscriptions. Just piggybacking on that question. So I keep encouraging them again about to tell African stories and we know African stories, we're still um, grabbing on the heels of Black Panther and the success that it has. I feel like Black Panther really confirmed that people can do black stories about, about black people and about Africans and people will watch and will actually go to the theater. Yes. Do you think the beauty about these streaming services has opened up more on um, more diverse stories, not even just about our continent, but even other continents. So animation uh, stories about 
our origin, our ethnic, ethnic backgrounds and stuff like that, do you think this has also opened up for us to be able to tell stories that will um, speak about us? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I'm sure you see it too. I feel like there's a whole shift in the culture going on right now. And I love it. And it's, um, it started off with, again, me just looking for a Black American show animation to watch. But now that we've proven that there's an audience for that, Black Panther did help us. You know, there is a whole entire world of stories out there that are not being told. And you guys should be the ones to tell it. It's your story, your culture. People want to hear it. People want to see it, but nobody was really making it. Or it comes back to what me and Humphrey were just talking about. If they, if they were making it, Nobody knew about it. Nobody saw it, nobody marketed it, nobody promoted it, and, or maybe they just waited to get a green light from somebody and they never got that green light. So I say, tell your story, make your story, and put it out yourself. Don't wait on anyone. Tell your stories, put your stories out, always create, just do it, just put it out. It's not all about the money all the time. You know, it's about creating when it's for yourself. You know, I always say get the bag when you're dealing with somebody else, but when it's your creativity and your stories, tell your stories because who's going to tell it? I can't tell an African story. I've never been to Africa. I'm coming next year to, to come fuck with y'all, but I've never been there. I've never been there. I can't tell your story. I would love to hear your story, and you're the, you guys are the only ones who can tell it. So you have to tell it. It's your duty to tell it, to be honest with you. It's your duty as African animators to tell your story. It's your duty to Africa. You hear that? Um, your, your duty. About what she's just discussed. And the fact that you're saying that it's our duty to produce African content, but our generation, and I feel like people older and younger than us, a lot of the stuff we do, yes, we're African, but a lot of the information and the content we um, take in is Western. So we're kind of stuck in a dilemma where like, yes, we're African, but a lot of the stuff we've been watching from child, like since we were children is like from America. So it's like, we're slightly brainwashed. Like, <laughs> yes, I'm African, but like the concepts and ideas I have sometimes I'm like, this does not sound like an African story because of the stories we've been taught like those are the only stories we know. So I feel like it's kind of tricky. Like I get that we need to, but it's, a, it's tricky. So my answer to that is, and I understand that. So perfect example for that is Yvonne Orji, the actress that I did the animated video for from Insecure. She's from Lagos. She is, she's my girl. Yes. And she's very prideful of that, right? So. In Insecure, she's a Cali, a Cali black girl. But when she made her stand up, she made it a point to have it, half of it was a documentary of her in Lagos and how she grew up and then coming to America. And in her comedy routine, it was a lot about her family, her upbringing mixed with Western culture. So I'm not saying come out just big Africa cartoon. This is all about Kenya and Kenya this and Kenya that. I'm not saying that, but there, even though you're influenced by us, I know you're still influenced by your parents or your brothers and sisters and cousins and things that you've seen around you and you could sprinkle it in. Don't force it in. If it's not natural, if it doesn't fit the narrative, then don't do that. But I feel like you want to have a piece of you in, in your art. So even if you were influenced by Western culture, that's fine. And I, I don't want to say, it's, when I say it's your duty, it's not like it's pressure. Create, create without limits. But if you ever have an opportunity to tell your story, you should tell it. We speak through art. Okay. I don't have anything else <laughs> to say. <laughs> Did I answer your question? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That wasn't really a question though. It was just, just speaking my mind. Yeah, but, I got you. Can I ask you guys some questions? Yeah. What's everybody's favorite cartoon? Let's talk cartoons, man. 
We animators, right? Yeah. What are your favorite cartoons? Do you have to pick one? No. Shot, whatever. What are your inspirations? What do you guys watch? Uh, um, me, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I used to have Netflix. I don't have it right now, but there's this show called Boja Horseman. I really liked it because there was this. I don't know. I never seen a cartoon where they really talked about like very deep and dark stuff, and they mostly kept it light. So I really found that fascinating. And then being able to like dwell on all the different topics and go like really deep into it, like topics like depression and like how people face like Hollywood and all that stuff like that. I found it really good. That's a great show. It went a lot of awards. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? I want to know everybody. Everybody sit down and tell me their favorite cartoon. That way I get to at least hear from everyone. If you can't talk about anything, I know we can talk cartoons. Yo, my all-time favorite has to be Ben 10. Like, I feel like it's yeah. like, like I even remember um, the first time I watched it. It was by accident. Um, back in the day, we didn't. Like, I I remember like we um, like right now we have DSTV and Cartoon Network, but like I remember back then we didn't have that. It was just uh, cartoons were shown in. Uh, there was this channel that uh, that uh, streamed the news, and then at the very end, after the news, I think it was around 4 p.m. for like an hour, for like half an hour, we'd get like cartoons here and then. And then all of a sudden, like it would just it cut off, you know, and then the news would continue. So I remember the first time I watched it, it was by accident. I was just like switching through the channels, and then I remember the first. I think the first alien I saw was. Cannonbolt. I don't know. If we have Benton fans here. It's the alien that, you know, rolls yeah. like a ball. And I remember like just seeing that, like, I don't know, I just I got addicted from that point on. It's just like it's like it's my all time favorite. Like I've watched the episodes I don't know how many times. And like when I started like when I started drawing and I started like creating um stories, I remember um that got me into superheroes, but back then I didn't really, I really didn't know. Like I wasn't really that exposed to like Marvel or DC. So, like my reference point was Ben Ten because he was a superhero. He was a kid, ten year old kid who, you know, was a superhero. So I remember like all my stories from that point on was just like superheroes. And I remember like um, grade four when I started drawing, when I started coming up with stories. Like I think I was like the weird kid in school, because like me and my friends, because like. <laughs> I'd come up with like stories and like um, I'd get my friends to role play with me, you know, during break. We'd be like out there and like, pew, 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 yeah, superheroes flying. It's like everyone else was like playing football and like, you know, like, what's, what's wrong with you guys? But like, that's, that's why I feel like Ben 10 was really, like, really got me into it. And like, I didn't know that people make cartoons. Like, I thought they were just, just you know, it spawned out of nowhere. But then when I when I learned that it was actually people who were making this stuff, that's when I got addicted. I was like, I want to make a show that you know, kind of like that. That really, you know, really just makes people happy. You know, because it really like with all the stress of school and like parents and getting good grades. It's like when I watch it, when I watch cartoons, it's like just pure bliss, happiness. You know, you just lose yourself in that world, and it's like, and that's all because of the. Ben 10. I'm like, I'm like, the weird kids in school become the rich adults in life. Be quiet. Don't we all know that? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they yeah. do. The weird kids become the rich adults. All right, there's some people in here I've not heard from. I know y'all can hear me. What is y'all favorite cartoon? What's up? I'm not gonna bite you. <laughs> Fine. I think one of mine was um Avatar, the last airbender, the airbender. last one with, yeah. with Aang. Yes, the original. Yeah, I think, yeah, when I watched it, I, I think from the moment I watched it, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to try this, like, I have to get into animation, like, it inspired me. Yeah, yeah. The Last Airbender is some of the best animation I've seen, man. I love that show. 
I love the way it looks. Yeah. I, I love everything about it. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. And I love the story, the storytelling. Yep. Great show. All right, next. Um, for me, I like um, Archer. I think it's in like, I think season, season 10 or something. Yeah, so it's my favorite. I like the way the story was written. And um, I kind of drew, um, how do I say this? I kind of, my drawing style is based on the, on this cartoon. Like if you see my drawings, they're just all real people in a cartoony way. Um, you said yeah, so, pardon me? What, what show did you say? Archer. Yeah, love it. Yeah, so it has a lot of like sarcasm, satire, irony, um, yeah, and a lot of good jokes. Yeah. Yes, hilarious. You know that 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 guy who made who makes Archer. He he wrote every episode too. They say he's crazy too. He drinks a lot. He's creative. He's hilarious. He's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> They're all crazy. They all crazy. We, 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 all, we are all crazy. To we be are all crazy. crazy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're a group, though. We're a crazy family. It's okay. <laughs> Next, I want to hear from everybody. I'm looking at somebody. I'm not going to let you go and wait for you to talk. You're not saying nothing. Can you hear my, my microphone now? Alvin, you're really low. Yeah, that's, I'm having an issue with this uh, computer. I don't know whether you can hear me, though. I'll turn you uh Go ahead, I think I can hear you. All right, so I really like uh, characters that have uh, juxtaposition. So I think my favorite uh, animated series are Mob Psycho 1000 and um, One Punch Man, because they really don't like their, their powers. They, they have this mentality where they, they don't like what, they, what they're able to do because they're so powerful. It's, it's, I love that. And um, I also wanted to mention that I also really like Archer just because of the camera moves that they do. They do like traditional uh, camera moves. You know, and I love how dynamic it feels. Yes, it's a great show. One Punch Man is crazy too. I, I, I like that cartoon. Okay, next. Yeah, um, uh, I like uh, the anime that I like the most is Kill la Kill. What's it called? Yes. Uh, Kill la Kill. Ooh, I never heard of that. I'm about to write that down. Kill la Kill. Yeah, uh, I kill and then la, then kill again. It's a. I like it because it's it's just insane. Like, I'm I'm just gonna. I don't wanna spoil it, but. Well, for most guys who, who, who watched it, I mean, we, it's usually like, you're like, wow, this show is so stupid. And like in the last quarter, you're like, oh my God, I didn't know it was this serious. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. it's so over the top. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's just, it's, it's stupid in a good way. Okay, now you just put me on to something because I never heard of that. I just wrote it down. I'm watching that tomorrow. Kill the Kill, right? K-I-L-L. And then L A and then K I L L, like that. Yeah, yeah, it's an anime. Okay, I'm on it. I'm on it. You just put me on. Okay, next. Um, I let me go. So I think P K is one who actually told me about Kill Like Kill. He's one who started. I started watching that from him. So I really like that also. Um, also, Pop of Girls, like the old one, not like the new one that's being made these days. I grew up watching that. Um, Samurai Jack, um, One Piece, uh, Johnny Bravo, like a lot of the old Cartoon Network, like cartoons, I, those I like. And then, um, what's this one called? I can't remember its name, but Wema put, put me on, on it. I can't remember its name, though. Johnny Bravo was my boy. I love Johnny Bravo. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good choices. Next. 
I have two people I have not heard from today. I feel like you guys don't love me. No, no. So I was gonna ask. <laughs> I think um, my favorite has to be a uh, Rick and Morty. Yeah. I mean, I like the show a lot. Um, the adult jokes in it and everything. I think I'm a big fan, and I need everything already. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> Rick is crazy, man. Yeah. Rick's crazy. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, great choice. Maha. Uh-oh, he's pulling out. Yes, I've been waiting on her all day. She didn't say anything. Um, I I loved watching watching um SpongeBob. Ah, SpongeBob, classic. Why do you classic. like SpongeBob? Sorry? What do you like about SpongeBob? Um the comedy and like the friendship, I guess. Yeah, SpongeBob's hilarious. Yeah. All right, VB. I, I got a little late. I had an issue with logging in. So can, can, can you hear me? Yeah, you're a little low, but I, I think I, I can hear you. Uh, okay, fine. Let me try and fix my volume. Uh, for me, uh, I liked uh, most of the early cast network cartoons. Uh, especially Ed and Eddie, um, Samurai Jack, and uh, as for now, my favorite anime is One Piece. What is it called? One Piece. One One Piece. Yeah. Okay, I'm about to. I'm writing that down. I never heard of that either. One Piece. So one like the number one, and then piece. piece. Yeah, One Piece. Okay. Yeah. One Piece. All right. All right, y'all put me on the two new shows. I'm excited about that. So I hope after this, The Roach Motel is one of y'all favorite shows. When y'all get done with me, I hope y'all, you know, watch that and y'all enjoy it, man, because I think it's hilarious. I think so too. I think they should all watch it. I'll give them an assignment of that and have them write what they think. Ooh. But it's, it's definitely something we've um, for me it was like this is really different this is very different so i really want to encourage them to watch it i appreciate that yeah so anything else guys anything else you want to know from me why you got me no good to go oh uh, wait i have a question oh oh okay go ahead oh you wanted to go first no it's okay go ahead oh, okay okay you said you mostly focus on like character design and stuff like that. You know how that like other fields, do you ever feel like you are being pushed in like other fields where you weren't that good at it, but you just had to adapt? Or did you feel like you had to be like good in almost not everything, but at least good enough where any project that was thrown at you, you could kind of do it? No, that's a good question too. No, absolutely. So when I started, I actually started off doing environments. I started off doing 3D animation, actually 3D environments in college, but it was boring. And I wanted to tell stories and make cool characters. So I just started, you know, I transitioned into that. And then I feel like you should, you have to know how to do everything a little bit, but you should definitely master something. Because oh. again, when you're watching these credits, you know, there are character designers for a reason and there are environment artists for a reason and there are, storyboard artist for a reason so if you want to go get a job which i'm not against at all of course if you want to go get a job you do need to focus on something because there are a lot of people that are okay at a lot of things but yeah. if, if somebody's really a banging character designer you'll always find work if you're just an okay character designer you might miss out on a lot of jobs if you're okay at this okay at that now for me being okay at a lot of things helped because i was working by myself but i always you know so I had to learn to be okay at a lot of things and in some things I'm better than others. You know, I don't claim to be the best animator by far, but I, I make the best shit. I make the best show. Yeah. You, know I mean? so, <laughs> you know, yeah. So I, if there's something that you really want to focus on because you're going to do it, you're going to be doing it forever. Animation takes a lot of time. So if you're going to spend a lot of time on something, it might as well be that the position that you want to be in, if that makes any sense. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, I have two questions. Okay. I have two answers. Are there many, yeah, <laughs> are there many uh, 
female animators because a lot of the time we always hear about men, 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 and I have nothing wrong with men, but I feel like as a young lady, I need to have like my lecture, majority of my lectures are female, uh, not female, let me say women, but like I don't see a lot of people talking about female animators because even with the guys who come to school, majority of them are men. And from the last time, like we had a previous panel with guys like animators and they told us why the women couldn't come home is because they had family. So do you think like those are things that may set back female animators because they have families or like, what do you think? I can't speak to that. Are there many? <laughs> Great no. question. Like, are you working with them? Like, cause no. I feel like they're being left out or something. You know what? Now that you mentioned it, yeah, I don't know one female animator, and I know a lot of people. I don't know one. You know a few from no. Now I do, but no, that's that's that's. Yeah, a, you do. And you know what? And I never even consciously observed that. I don't know. So one. is it? Do you think it's an industry dominated by men? Like, why, why do you think it is? Like, what tips could we learn if we're entering an industry that's based, dominated by men? Create Especially now as young ladies, if we're joining in as young ladies, like, so we're not run over by people. Create your own content so there's nobody to run you over. Be a boss. Love it. Hire all women. Create content that you want to create. You know, that's the only way to change the game is to change the game, you know? So... Okay. I never even noticed that I don't know any female. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm going to actively start searching for female animators. And put Are you serious, Rich, really? I'm, <laughs> that's ser funny. I'm serious. Like, that's, that's the same as me not knowing a bunch of black animators. It's the same thing. So yeah. if I'm going to be reaching out, actively seeking black animators, see, now I learned something from you guys. I'm going to start actively searching for female animators because I don't know any. Like, even when I put out posts where I'm hiring or trying to build a team, I've never had a female reach out to me, ever. So I don't even think it's, I always assume it's because females just don't watch cartoons. Like the average person watching a cartoon, the average demographic is guys, I thought, you know? But even when, I, when I'm thinking back to college, there weren't a lot of female animators in my classes at all. There might be like one or two. So I don't know if there are a lot of you guys. I don't know where you are. I don't know. Uh also, do you think it may be the working environment? The working environment makes it uncomfortable for you? Yeah. Them? No, I'm, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to have a discussion about why they're not there. Like, do you think it's because maybe, like, from a young age, girls are taught that they're supposed to go into different industries to work in, or it's now that they're there, like, the work industry doesn't allow them to do certain things, and those with families are kicked out because... Like you said, animation takes a lot of work, so right. it takes up a lot of your time. Yeah, I don't know. I usually know the answers to a lot of things, but I'm not a female, so I don't know how to answer that question. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I feel like a woman can do anything a man do. Like, if a woman really wants to be an animator, having a family is not going to stop her from being an animator. Like, that's, I don't believe that. That's, I don't think that. So I don't think that's a thing. And every studio that I've been in, it just doesn't, it doesn't seem like they make it uncomfortable for women, but the women are never animators in those studios. They're usually either, now that I think of it, a lot of times they're the boss. They're not an animator. A lot of times they're either an executive or uh, an art director or a creative director. And I've seen that a lot, but like an actual animator, I haven't seen a lot of female animators. And I don't, I don't know why. Maybe you guys are above that. <laughs> and you're just like, fuck it. I'm not going to animate. I'm going to tell the animators what to do. Could be that. And think like I know, I know Pixar and Disney, it's very male-dominated. She's very right about that. Moni's very right about that. It's very male-dominated. How do we change that, Moni? How? Um, it starts with us, I guess. There we go. Hopefully, when I'm around your age, I'll be talking to students and be seeing a lot more female animators. Yes. Anyway, and that my, my other question, you said, um, just to be clear, you said that you joined university and started going to the gaming world. Is that what you said? 
Or yeah. did I hear something? At first, why, why did you move? Because it feels like a lot of us are interested in going to gaming. Like we, we could either, either concentrate in gaming or character animation. And majority of us are going into gaming because character animation is just a lot. I feel like it's, it's not interesting, but at the same time, it is. So it's like we're trying to figure out which one of the two. So why, why did you move from gaming to like character animation? I moved from gaming because I saw that gaming took a lot more pieces, especially with programmers. Like I know when I'm animating, I don't have to keep in mind what a programmer needs to do with these pieces. I can just make the pieces and the pieces are made. You know, I, I don't think I just grasped that concept. It just wasn't for me. Um, I love video games. I still love video games and I'm still floored by the things that I see when I turn on my PlayStation, it's like, man, like, how did they do this? So, I don't know, for me, it just, I kind of just got pulled into the direction I got. I don't think um, there was one specific thing that made me stop wanting to do games. I, I just, I don't know, I kind of just fell into what my path was. It wasn't a specific, okay. it wasn't at all. If I could make a video game, I would love to make a video game. I love games. They actually have some of the best animation ever. Like video, man, video games are amazing. <laughs> They're amazing. Their works of art. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, I have I have a few questions as well. Is it, can you hear me? Yes. <clears throat> okay. So I wanted to know what's your opinion on. Uh, sketch based shows like family guy versus shows which are more story oriented like most anime like what which what do you think is more compelling more compelling hmm. um i don't know man i think it's apples and oranges you know i think it just honestly i really just feel like it depends on what mood you're in some days i want to watch anime some days i want to laugh some days i want to see compelling storytelling. Sometimes I just want to see some real cool ass animation where the story doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? I think there's content for everyone and there's a lane for everyone depending on what mood you're in. So I don't compare them as one is better than the other. It's all art, you know, and you consume it how and whenever you want to consume it. I don't compare them. I don't, cause like, you know, some days I like comedy, some days, you know, like the other day I watched the Mortal Kombat animated movie. I wanted to see some violence one day. That gave me all the violence I wanted to see. Then the next day I wanted to laugh, so I put on uh, Rick and Morty, and I'm laughing, you know? Yeah. Okay. And um, my, my other question is, when it comes to creating your own stories, yeah, these there's certain limitations that we face, especially if you're making a story that's meant to be in Kenya, for example. There's a lot of um, quote-unquote censorship. And we might, sh so sh the question is, should we tailor our content to the audience or should we just make what we want to make and hope that people watch it and they like our things? You know my answer to this already, right? <laughs> Yes, we do. <laughs> Come on, you. Listen, you have to make what you want to make, right? The right. one thing someone cannot take away from you is your creativity and your voice. If you're working for someone else, that's when you make what you have to make. But when you're doing something for yourself, do what you want to do. Who are you? Like, why are you limiting yourself? Don't, please don't limit yourself. Even if it's not to sell it. Yeah. Just create for your soul, right? Like what we do, art, I believe, is 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 food for the soul, right? Like you gotta let this creativity out. You don't hold on to it. So you're not you should never limit your voice. Never never hold your voice because you're the only person who has that voice, right? What if you think you're what if you limit yourself and you didn't put out originally what you wanted to put out and that was going to be the next big thing because you were scared yeah. what somebody was going to think. 
you watch the Ro Roach Motel, you can tell I don't give a shit what anybody thinks. That's I know true. What the audience is. I know what they like. They're gonna laugh at this. And the people who are offended by that, it wasn't for you. So there's a bunch of other shows you can go watch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Great for yourself. I watch my show for me. I'm not even joking. When I make my show, I'm laughing when I write it. I'm laughing when I animate it. And when it's finished, I'm proud of it. And I sit back and I watch it and I laugh again because I made it for myself. And if other people like it, that's great. That's a bonus. But mm -hmm. great for yourself because there's a lot of people that's just like you. Please believe if you're, you want to make a show about a guy who just walks around just chopping people's heads off every day. He wakes up in the morning. That's what he do. You know what? Let's see how many heads I can chop off today and you chop them off and it's bloody and his ears everywhere. You're gonna be like, man, I love this. And you're gonna think everybody think it's crazy, but guess what? There's probably a bunch of other people who might wanna watch the, the head chop off guy. You're not the only person who thinks like that. And nobody yeah. made the head chop off guy cartoon for them, for them to even decide if they're gonna watch tonight. You don't know. So just do it, just do it. I think the conversation about creating it for an audience is definitely a control conversation. It's, I, I love that you said, speak your voice. I feel like every, studios are like that and the commercial world is like that, that they want to create, to put you on this um, controlled environment where you're creating. But art, it, that's not what art is. It's, that's not what art is. You don't tell people what to create when doing art. It's here is a clean piece of paper. Do what your heart desires and do 100%. Yeah, so I love that you answered it that way. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for asking that, Kelvin. That's important for people to know that, yeah. Um, to add on what to, he was just asking about, I feel like he's talking about the censorship. Like, can things get banned if like, the government doesn't agree with them here? Who cares? No, no, I'm, no, I'm saying, like, like, if you work on something so hard and it's controversial and then it's banned, like, how do you move past that? You're going to win anyway. If, somebody, if you make a cartoon and it gets banned, the whole world is going to watch your cartoon. They're going to find a way to watch it because they're going to be like, well, yep. it's banned. Yep. If I can't wait to watch this banned cartoon. Okay. Maybe. I think the idea is don't stifle your voice, Moni and Kelvin. And that's, the, that's, the, that's the, what the message is. When you start beginning to worry about what the world thinks and whatever, then you start be, uh, becoming this human being or this artist who doesn't pour out 100% the art in them or what it, whatever it is that they want to express. If there's a message you want to say or you want to speak out about something, don't fear because, oh, there's this board or there's this whatever. Put it out on paper. Put it out there. And like he said, the world's going to see. If you're talking like, remember even Wanori Kahio, there's this filmmaker, Rich, who did a movie on uh, LGBTQ and it was banned in Kenya. I think they showed it for like a week and then after that it was yeah. banned. But it showed in the rest of the world. There's a message and you want to speak that message. Do not stifle your voice. And I really need you guys to understand that as my students. Speak up. You're young. You need to speak up. There are issues. You cannot be... Um, an artist who's always worried about, oh my gosh, what's going to happen to me? I want you guys to learn to speak up. Sorry, could you please repeat that? My PC just died as, as you were ans answering my question. <laughs> I didn't hear you. I, I you said, mind repeating that? Because my PC just died as you were answering my question. Me or, or her? Uh, I, I heard what you said, then uh, Ms. Nemo said speaking. Oh, okay. So, no, the moral of the story is create what you want to create. Never stifle your creativity. Don't think about what anyone else is going to think about it or if anyone's going to be offended or whatever. Art is expression. Express yourself the way you want to express yourself. Do it for you. Like, that's my thing. Like, this is not creating products, right? We're artists. Art is expression. Expression. If you're creating something to be sold, that's a whole nother thing. But we're not talking. About we're just talking about being a true artist. And being an artist is expressing yourself. If there's something that you want to create, you create that. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. Because it doesn't always have to be for everybody. Do it for yourself. Create for yourself. It's freeing, it frees you. Like art is the one thing 
that people can't control and you shouldn't let them control. They're like muffling your voice. Don't let anybody muffle your voice. And don't be so scared that they're gonna muffle your voice that you muffle your own voice. You guys are sounding scared like you going, somebody gonna do something to you. Ain't nobody gonna do nothing to you. Who gonna do something to you? Nobody. Make it, put it out, see what happens. And if it never comes out, so what? At least you did it for yourself. So you can sit back and say, hey man, I did that. I'm proud of that. For yourself, for your soul. It's art. It's art. Okay, yes, but how, is there like a balance you can strike whereby you also have the wide reach? Like what I'm talking about mainly is, for example, right now, if in Kenya, if I decided to add like, I don't know, gay characters in my, in my, in my animation, mm-hmm. it'd be an issue in the country. You'd probably get banned because that, that's what our cabinet secretary of entertainment likes doing. He likes banning things. So would I make the decision not to include these characters and to have my story out there so I can have a wider audience? Listen. That's my question. Do those gay characters push your, your story forward and tell your story the right way? Yes. Okay. Is Kenya the only place in the world? No, it's not. It's not. It's not. I thought there was more to that question. It is not the only place in the world. So guess what? Do you know how many gay people are in the world? In the world? Powerful gay people who need content and want to see characters that represent them? Don't worry about Kenya. Worry about the whole rest of the world who are going to love those characters that you created for them. So what is banned in Kenya? It's a, we got the internet. Nothing's banned for real. You can't ban anything. It's the internet. The world wide web. If people want to find it, you put it out there, Somebody gonna see it, make it. If it's true to your story and true to what you want to tell, you make it and you put it out. Bam, and that don't mean nothing, man, nothing. It is a big world out there. And people yeah. probably love you more for taking that chance because a lot of people are scared to take that chance. Look, think about how many people are like you are saying, There's, I'm scared to put this gay character or I'm scared to put this bisexual character, whatever. Black characters, even black characters. Even black characters. Come on, man. If you don't do it, nobody's going to do it. So you should do mm-hmm. it. You should do it. You do it. Right. You better do it. If it pushes your story forward and it's true to your story, you do it. You stay, you stay true to your content. Always. Always. Let them tell you no later. You let, you, you're telling yourself no before they even tell you no. Don't do that to yourself. That's not fair to you. That's not fair to yourself. For real. All right, thank you. You're welcome. I want y'all to be great, man. Like, no, you can't, yo, you cannot have fear in art. That is the last genre that you hit. Yo, all the fearless people in art win. Yeah. Fearless. That's how you win. You be fearless. You tell your stories that you want to tell your way. You're, especially when you're not working for somebody else. You can tell their stories when they hire you. But what, when you're happy, when you have the opportunity to tell stories you want to tell, you tell them. You tell them the way you want to tell them. Please, if you don't take nothing else from what I say, tell your stories. Be fearless. Art is expression. Express yourself. Yep. All those nude statues they was making back in the day, you think you were thinking like, oh man, I shouldn't put a penis on this statue? Now they're in museums. Come on, man. Don't do that. That's right. Oh my gosh, Rich. This is so amazing. Thank you so, so very much. I mean, we've kept you up all night, right? It's like 5 a.m. where you are now. I'm a nighttime DJ. It's cool. (laughs) (laughs) We are truly grateful. And guys, I want to encourage you to stay in touch with Rich. Um, This world, I can tell you, is small. You'll be in Atlanta one day. I I know you'll visit Rich's studio one day. We'll have him in in Kenya one of these days. So let's keep this relationship going with him. Um, Like you said, not many of us, when we were starting out, had mentors who can guide us, people who look like us. So it's important that um, you will, I'm telling you, when you start working, you're really going to appreciate that you had somebody like Rich sit 
with you and share with you his experience, tell you the real story, tell you the real world. This is how it is. Prepare you. And I'm so grateful that Rich, you are able to come and join us this morning and your super early morning. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll visit your website. We're going to watch your shows. We have your email. Keep sending us stuff you want us to watch. If we have to follow you on social media, so we'll, we'll be on it. We promise you we'll be on it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're very well. I really appreciate the opportunity. Like I said, I didn't have anyone to talk to me. So I wanted to make sure I gave you everything I got. You know, I want to leave it all on the floor so you guys don't have any questions. And I, I hope I helped you guys. I really do. You did. Oh, my gosh. What do you guys think? Wasn't this incredible? I mean, I know I'm putting words in your mouth, but truly for me, you really lit up the passion in me. Um, yeah, it made me, made me bold. <laughs> yeah. Good. I like that. Be bold, man. Be bold. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys having me. I put all my information there, you guys. Anytime, if you want to DM me, if you have a question later on, it's, it's cool. I'm here. I'm here. I'm not going to change just because I'm not on here anymore. You guys can hit me up. It's fine. And then when you get, when you graduate, hit me up. Send me your reels. I will be hiring. There you go. You heard it from the horse's mouth. I'll be hiring women too. How about that? <laughs> Moni, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. Truly grateful. I'll keep in touch with you. I'm sure we're going to speak again. Okay. Have a really awesome rest of the day. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hey, guys, um, you have your midterm. I'm going to put it up on Blackboard. So you'll probably, it will be due on Friday at...